Tirumurai Tamil, Tirumurai meaning holy division, is a twelve-volume compendium of songs or hymns in praise of Shiva in the Tamil language from the 6th to the 11th century by various poets in South India. Nambi Andar Nambi compiled the first seven volumes by Apar, Sampandar and Sundarar as Tavaram during the 12th century. During the course of time, a strong necessity was felt by scholars to compile Saiva literature to accommodate other works. Tiruvachakam and Tirukovayar by Manikavasagar are included as the eighth, nine parts are compiled as the ninth Tirumurai out of which most are unknown, and the tenth is Tirumandaram by Tirumular, the famous Siddhar. The eleventh is compiled by Karakal Amayar, Cheraman Perumal and others. The contemporary Chola king was impressed by the work of Nampi and included Nampi's work in the eleventh Tirumurai. Sekijar's Periya Puranam, composed a century later, contains the life depiction of all the 63 Nainmars. The response for the work was so tremendous among Seva scholars and Kulathunga Chola II that it was included as the 12th Tirumurai. Tirumurai, along with Vedas and Seva Agamas, form the basis of Seva Siddhanta philosophy in Tamil Nadu. History and background The Pallava period in the history of the Tamil land is a period of religious revival of Shaivism by the Shaivite Nayanars who by their Bhakti hymns captured the hearts of the people. They made a tremendous impression on the people by singing the praise of Shiva in soul-stirring devotional hymns. Tirumurai in anthology supersedes Sangam literature, which is predominantly secular in nature. The entire Tirumurai is in Virudam meter or lines of four. The principal characteristics of the head rhyming is influenced both by syllabic and moric prosody. Topic: Poets. Topic: Hymns. The Shaiva Tirumurai are 12 in number. The first seven Tirumurai are the hymns of the three great Shaivite saints, Sambandar, Apar and Sundarar. These hymns were the best musical compositions of their age. The first three Tirumurai meaning parts of Tavaram are composed by Sambanthar, the next three by Apar and the seventh one is composed by Sundarar. There is a famous saying about the Seva trio that, Apar sang for me, Sambanthar sang for himself and Sundarar sang of gold. Apar and Sambanthar lived around the 7th century, while Sundarar lived in the 8th century. During the Pallava period these three travelled extensively around Tamil Nadu offering discourses and songs characterised by an emotional devotion to Shiva and objections to Vaishnavism, Jainism and Buddhism. Sambanthar was a 7th century poet born in Sirkali in Brahmin community and was believed to be suckled by the goddess Parvathi, whereupon he sang the first hymn. On the request of the Queen of Pandya Nadu, Sambandar went on a pilgrimage to the south and defeated Jains in debate. The Jains provoked Sambandar by burning his house and challenging him to debate, but Sambandar eventually had victory over them. He was a contemporary of Apar, another Seva saint. Information about Sambandar comes mainly from the Periya Puranam, the 11th century Tamil book on the Nayanars that forms the last volume of the Tirumurai, along with the earlier Tiruttandartakai, poetry by Kuntarar and Nambiyandar Nambi's Tiru Tandar Tiruvandadi. A Sanskrit hagiography called Brahmapurisa Charitam is now lost. The first volumes of the Tirumurai contain 384 poems of Kampantar in 4,181 stanzas, all that survive out of a reputed more than 10,000 hymns. Sambanthar is believed to have died at the age of 16 in 655 CE on the day of his marriage. His verses were set to tune by Nilakantaparumalanar who is said to have accompanied the poet on his Yal or lute. Apar aka was born in the middle of the 7th century in Tiruvamur, Tamil Nadu, his childhood name for Marulnikir. His sister, Thilagavathiar was betrothed to a military commander who died in action. When his sister was about to end her life, he pleaded with her not to leave him alone in the world. She decided to lead an aesthetic life and bring up her only brother. During boyhood, Apar was very much interested in Jainism and started studying its scriptures. He went away from home and stayed in their monastery and was renamed Dharmasena. Details of Apar's life are found in his own hymns and in Sekijar's Periya Puranam the last book of the Tirumurai. Apar had traveled to nearby Patalipura to join a Jain monastery where he was given the name Dharmasena. 
Seeing the transient, ephemeral world he decided to probe into truth through renunciation. After a while, afflicted by a painful illness, Dharmasena returned home. He prayed for relief at the Shiva temple where his sister served and was cured. He was also involved in converting the Pallava king, Mahendravarman to Savism. This was also the period of resurrection of the smaller Shiva temples. Apar sanctified all these temples by his verses and was also involved in cleaning of the dilapidated temples called Ujjavarapadai. He was called Tiranavakarasu, meaning the king of divine speech. He extolled Shiva in 49,000 stanzas out of which 3,130 are now available and compiled in Tirumurai 4-7. When he met Kampantar, he called him Apar meaning father. He is believed to have died at the age of 81 in Tirupugalar. Sundarar aka Sundaramurti was born in Tirunavalur in a Brahmin family during the end of the 7th century. His own name was Nambi Arurar and was prevented from marrying by the divine grace of Shiva. He later married a temple girl named Paravi and a Velala community girl named Kankili. He is the author of 1026 poems compiled as the 7th Tirumurai. Manikavasagar's Tiruvachakam and Tirukovayar are compiled as the 8th Tirumurai and is full of visionary experience, divine love and urgent striving for truth. Manikavasagar was the king's prime minister and renounced his post in search of divinity. The 9th Tirumurai has been composed by Tirumalikadavar, Sundarar, Karuvardavar, Nampikatava Nampi, Gandharaditya, Venatatakal, Tiruvalyamutanar, Puritatama Nampi, and Satirayar. Among these, the notable is Gandharaditya, CE, a Chola king who later became a Saivite saint. Tirumandaram by Tirumular unfolds Siddhantha attainment as a fourfold path, virtuous and moral living, temple worship, internal worship and union with Shiva. Tirumular worked out an original philosophical system, and the southern school of Saiva Siddhantha draws its authority from Tirumandaram, a work of 3,000 verses. Tirumandaram represents another school of thought detailing agamic traditions, which run parallel to the Bhakti movement. It does not glorify temples or deities as in the case of other Tirumurai. The 11th Tirumurai was composed by Karikal Amayar, Saraman Purumal, Patinatu P. Pilayar, Nakiratevar, Kapaladeva, Tiruvallavayudayar, Nampiantarnampi, I. Y. Yadigal Katavarkhan, Kaladateva, Paranadeva, Elamparaman Adigal, and Athirava Adigal. Nambi's Tiratatanar Tiravanthathi followed an exclusive style of mincing Tamil and Sanskrit verses in Anthati meter similar to Tavaram of the trio. Karikal Amayar is the earliest of the woman Saivite poets who introduced the Katalai K. Kali T. Tarai meter, which is a complicated structural departure from the old classical Tamil meters. The other meter used by Amayar was an old Venba and also an Antathi arrangement in which the offset of one line or stanza is identical with the onset of the next line or stanza. Pariya Puranam Tamil, Pariya Puranam the Great Purana or Epic, sometimes also called Tiruttantarpuranam read as Tiru Thunder Puranam. The Purana of the Holy Devotees is a Tamil poetic account depicting the legendary lives of the 63 Nayanars, the canonical poets of Tamil Shaivism. It was compiled during the 12th century by Sekijar. It provides evidence of trade with West Asia. Sekijar compiled and wrote the Pariya Puranam listing the life stories of the 63 Shaiva Nayanars, poets of the god Shiva who composed the liturgical poems of the Tirumurai, and was later himself canonized and the work became part of the sacred canon. Sekijar was a poet and the chief minister in the court of the Chola king, Kulathunga Chola II. Compilation Raja Raja Chola I CE embarked on a mission to recover the hymns after hearing short excerpts of Tavaram in his court. He sought the help of Nambi Andar Nambi, who was a priest in a temple. It is believed that by divine intervention Nambi found the presence of scripts, in the form of katajam leaves half eaten by white ants in a chamber inside the second precinct in Thilai Nataraja temple, Chidambaram. The Brahmanas in the temple informed the king about the tradition that only when all three poets come together, that the chamber can be opened, and Rajaraja found a work around by consecrating the images of the saint poets through the streets of Chidambaram. Rajaraja thus became to be known as Tirumurai Kanda Cholan meaning one who saved the Tirumurai. Thus far Shiva temples only had images of god forms, but after the advent of Rajaraja, the images of the Nayanar saints were also placed inside the temple. 
Nambi arranged the hymns of three saint poets Kampantar, Apar, and Sundarar as the first seven books, Manikavasagar's Tirakovire and Tiruvachakam as the eighth book, the twenty eight hymns of nine other saints as the ninth book, the Tirumandaram of Tirumular as the tenth book, forty hymns by twelve other poets as the tenth book, Tiratotanar Tiruvanthathi, the sacred Anthathi of the labours of the sixty three Nayanar saints, and added his own hymns as the eleventh book. The first seven books were later called Tavaram, and the whole Seva canon, to which was added, as the twelfth book, Sekijar's Periya Puranam 1135 CE, is wholly known as Tirumurai, the holy book. Thus Seva literature which covers about 600 years of religious, philosophical and literary development. <laughs> Temples revered Padal Petra Stalams are 275 temples that are revered in the verses of Tavaram and are amongst the greatest Shiva temples of the continent. Vaipu Stalangal are places that were mentioned casually in the songs in Tavaram. The focus of the Muvars first three poets hymns suggests darshan seeing and being seen by God within the puja worship offering. The hymnists made classificatory lists of places like Katu for forest, Tarai port or refuge, Kulam water tank and Kalam field being used, thus both structured and unstructured places in the religious context find a mention in Tavaram. The temples mentioned in the works of the 9th Tirumurai, Tiruvizayapa, are in turn referred to as Tiruvisaipa Thalangal. The shrine of Gongaikonda Cholapuram are revered as under. Quote, he of the shrine of Gongaikonda Kaleswaram takes whatever forms that his worship visualize. 131, 5. Topic <laughs> in culture. Tirumurai was one of the reasons for converting Vedic ritual to Agamic puja followed in Shiva temples. Though these two systems are overlapping, Agamic tradition ensures the perpetuation of the Vedic religion's emphasis on the efficacy of ritual as per Davis. Odavars, Stanakars, or Katalayars offer musical programs in Shiva temples of Tamil Nadu by singing Tavaram after the daily rituals. These are usually carried out as a chorus program soon after the divine offering. There are records from Kulathunga Chola III from Nalanyanar Temple in South Arcot indicating singing of Tiruvepavai and Tiruvalam of Manikavasagar during special occasions in the temple. From the 13th century, the texts were passed on to the Odavars by the Adhayanams or Mathas and there was no more control by the kings or the Brahmanas. The Odavars were from the Velala community and were trained in ritual singing in Tavaram schools. Periya Puranam, the 11th century Tamil book on the Nayanars that forms the last volume of the Tirumurai, primarily had references only to Tavaram and subsequently expanded to twelve parts and is one of the first anthologies of Tirumurai. One of the first anthologies of Muvar's hymns called the Tavara Arulmyoritiratu is linked to Tamil Seva Siddhanta philosophy by grouping 99 verses into 10 categories. The category headings are God, Soul, Bond, Grace, Guru, Methodology, Enlightenment, Bliss, Mantra, and Liberation. Corresponding to Umapthi's work, Tiruvaritpayan, Tirumurai Kanda Puranam is another anthology for Tirumurai as a whole, but primarily focuses on Tavaram. It is the first of the works to refer the collection of volumes as Tirumurai. <laughs> Notes <laughs>